It's Jan 9th, 2007. Steve Jobs, the then CEO of Apple, the is on internet stage. Internet device section here. I want to show you something truly remarkable, which is Google Maps on iPhone. I hit our Maps application here, and it's coming up. <clears throat> so I'm just going to look for Starbucks, right? And sure enough, there's all the Starbucks. The crowd erupts into applause. To quote Steve Jobs from the day, the software on the iPhone was five years ahead of any of its competition, and he turned out to be right. It's September 23rd, 2008. Google launches the Android operating system. T-Mobile invites journalists to an event for the official announcement of the first Google phone, the HTC Dream. By this time, Google knows the most used application apart from those built by Apple and Facebook is Maps. It also forms an essential part of owning a smartphone. With just over half a million in sales in the first year compared to Apple's nearly 10 million units, Google soon realizes it needs to up their offering on Android and identifies Maps as a key opportunity. They decide to controversially release turn by turn directions only for their Android devices, creating a major rift within Apple's board. You see, Eric Schmidt, the then CEO of Google, sits on their board and is most likely privy to all of Apple's secrets. In August 2009, Eric is asked to resign from the board, and in October 2009, Google releases their turn by turn navigation feature on Android. This triggers Apple to create their own Maps application in partnership with TomTom. Three years later, during the release of iOS 6 in 2012, Scott Forstall, SVP of iOS software, launches Apple Maps. Apple partnered with TomTom for their vector maps and eventually replaced Google Maps as the default app for maps from iOS 6 onwards. For the uninitiated, Google and Waze by acquisition hold some 79% map market share against Apple. Apple is at 11%. Apple Maps misses out on some key features, and we'll see a little more about that, but it's hard to understand why they continue to invest in it. What's that one connection that makes Apple Maps stand out from Google, and probably even be better than Google? Before we get to that, let's look at how all of this started. Going back to 2004, Google incorporated their business search results into a product called Google Local. This helped you find businesses and their phone numbers along with search results pages. By the way, this was approximately three months before Yelp was founded. Before Maps, Google Local showed results on a map generated by MapQuest. It soon became apparent that only if Google owned the map data, it helped users solve what they really came to Google for, not just to discover businesses, but navigate them to it. Fast forward a few years, this is an actual roadmap of how Google Maps evolved. They first launched for the desktop, satellite imagery was incorporated in 2005, and Maps was renamed to Google Local. It expanded support for Palm and BlackBerry devices, and as we saw earlier, it made its way to the first iPhone launched in 2007. Ratings and Reviews was launched in 2008, followed by Turn by Turn Navigation in 2009. By 2010, Maps had over 100 million users. It was a dream roadmap and a stark contrast to how Apple evolved their Maps application. It followed a very closed ecosystem approach where even today you don't find Apple Maps on Android devices. Forget that, they're not even available on the web, they're on a Mac-only desktop application. That effectively restricts users only to iPhones since we don't use our MacBooks to navigate in our cars, and depending on which statistic you refer to, that's only about a quarter of all smartphones out there. This is pretty significant, probably quite obvious. Google's own open approach has led it to depend on user-generated content, while Apple has had to depend on an ecosystem of partners, such as Yelp, to develop the content for them. This was so apparent that when Apple launched Maps in 2012, they even had to redirect users who shared Apple applications to Google Maps on the web. Second, privacy. If there's one major credit to be given to Apple Maps, it must be for how they handle their data. While Google makes it really easy for your significant other to know if you've had an affair, Apple keeps everything on your device. Google's defense will be that they're personalizing ads and businesses based on your past locations, but nothing can escape the fact that your history is captured in minute detail and stored online unless you opt to delete this. The design. Apple Maps was redesigned for iOS 7 in 2013. In September 2016, it was built from the ground up, and it was again built from the ground up and launched in 2018. This obsession to make the app look great must have taken a considerable number of resources from releasing meaningful features to users. In comparison, Google Maps redesigned their maps only once in 2009 and then in 2013. Material design was incorporated in 2015, but was only restricted to the left side navigation and search results. In summary, Apple's roadmap went like this. iOS 6 featured turn-by-turn -turn navigation and flyover. It was really cool, but not very useful. iOS 7 featured sharing location, 3D view, full screen mode, night mode, real-time traffic information, navigation for pedestrians, and the frequent locations feature, but most notably missed public transit directions. 2015 saw the launch of iOS 9, when it finally brought public transportation. It also added a feature called nearby that showed points of interest for categories such as restaurants and gas stations. 
it also added more integrations. For example, to get interests in other countries, it would integrate with local mapping providers, such as JustStyle in India, Foursquare in Singapore, TripAdvisor in Europe, and so on. Google Maps, by comparison, had driving directions in 111 countries in 2010, while Apple is only at 56 currently. Yes, in 2020. This goes back to Google's focus on user-generated content early on. Google Maps faced its own set of controversies along its illustrious history. Remember Street View images leading to lawsuits regarding privacy concerns? But these were rare, and the distance they've traveled thus far, it's impossible to think how Apple will ever beat Google. Until you look at a relatively secret acquisition Apple made in 2015 of a company called Coherent Navigation. It was a company that specialized in improving consumer-grade GPS, and it's a proprietary technology they called iGPS. Here's the connection. They recently revealed a patent application which was filed by the Coherent Navigations team to correct GPS estimates using machine learning. Connect this with the Apple Watch, the undisputed leader in variables currently, as well as the fact that Google was not allowed to have their Maps app on the Apple Watch from 2017 onwards. The investment in Maps all comes down to ruling Maps on the smartwatch. The accuracy you can get from iGPS, as well as the patent to correct GPS using machine learning, can provide Apple an unprecedented advantage over Google when it comes to variables. Then, consider the possibility of a self-driving car manufactured by Apple. Google spends millions if not billions navigating and collecting valuable data for Waymo to succeed, and Apple is no different. Smartphones may be the gadget of the current tech generation, but variables in CarPlay are likely to be the future, and that's where Apple wants to be.